Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me to this conference as a presenter. Uh, the initial idea uh, was uh, to deliver a uh, uh, presentation devoted to the scientific paper, but I guess uh, I need to uh, uh, touch upon more details because my presentation uh, will uh, expand on uh, what the previous uh, speakers had to say. For instance, oh, by the way, I uh, recall the year of 2000, I used to be a vet working at a poultry farm. The survival rate was uh, 98, 98.1, or sometimes even higher or over a period of time of 40, 48 to 50 days. And uh, well, uh, we had no problems back, th back then, uh, objectively speaking. But as the uh, virus strain productivity increased, as uh, virus infections uh, started coming from abroad, as, far, uh, as soon as we started increasing the density and creating more stresses for the poultry, the efforts uh, of vets uh, increased exponentially. And in 2008, I started uh, studying feed. Uh, I didn't want to micromanage my uh, uh, flock managers, but uh, I wanted to deep dive into the causes of uh, uh, poultry growth prevention because uh, I provided enough feed, but uh, uh, my uh, uh, my flocks would not develop properly. And I decided to focus on the veterinary diets. Uh, this is uh, a uh, science uh, 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 which is uh, an overlap of uh, veterinary medicine and uh, flock management uh, practices. Uh, and these solutions require uh, a teamwork between zootech, uh, well, her, uh, flock managers and vets. How do I advance my slides? The largest button, right? Let me uh, describe the concept uh, to you first. Uh, let me remind you of some of the uh, data that you might be familiar with. Uh, it's just uh, a brief uh, summary of uh, open uh, literature data. Uh, uh, how, uh, how is energy and how are nutrients used? The uh, energy of uh, all the nutrients uh, is called uh, overall energy content, uh, this is uh, what uh, a bird takes in. And uh, not all the nutrients uh, are metabolized. Some of them are uh, just excreted with uh, feces and the energy uh, uh, digested uh, is called digestible energy. That's uh, uh, 80 to 90% uh, of uh, uh, the uh, energy content. If you, if you subtract the urine energy, uh, you will uh, 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 get the uh, metabolism energy. That's about three quarters of the initial energy content. If you subtract uh, the uh, thermal generation, uh, all, all you're left with is just 50% of the energy content. If you subtract the uh, energy, uh, the daily energy consumption, because, you know, birds are alive organisms, uh, they are engaged in some metabolism and staying alive takes energy. Therefore, uh, for average daily gain or for egg laying, uh, a bird uh, is left with just uh, 12 to 17, maximum 20% of the energy. So that means that only 20% of the energy intake is uh, spent on productivity. Uh, let's uh, deep dive into the uh, maintenance energy. Uh, you know, uh, the, uh, intestinal enzymes, uh, uh, intestinal motility require five to seven percent of the energy. Immunity uh, accounts for ten to twenty percent of the energy intake. Uh, And uh, we all know that uh, most of the enzymes are generated in the intestine. Therefore, 15% uh, of uh, all the nutrients uh, go to the intestine. But that's in a healthy bird. Uh, let's say uh, a bird uh, is infected or 
uh, vaccinated uh, with too high a dose. Therefore, uh, the uh, energy spent on average daily gains uh, is reduced. What becomes a burden for uh, for intestines, uh, uh, guts are populated with uh, multiple bacteria. Uh, most of them live in the large intestine, and uh, the uh, micro microbial content is ten uh, to the power of twelve uh, per gram. They could be benign or pathogenic. Uh, they uh, develop and. Uh, uh, motility uh, transports them to the small intestine. Uh, they start irritating receptors and the uh, mucosa. Mucosa uh, starts uh, uh, generating uh, more uh, mucus. Uh, the absorption gets disrupted and then the immunity kicks in. If uh, a body cannot get rid of pathogens for a long time, uh, then the immune system kicks in. As a result, what you get is uh, reduced absorption of nutrients and the higher energy consumption uh, for immunity. Antibiotics, probiotics, uh, prebiotics, everything a poultry farm uses uh, to prevent uh, this bacteriosis are aimed at uh, direct impact on the bacterial cell. This is a diagram showing uh, the number of uh, different bacteria in different uh, parts of the gastrointestinal tract. Is there a laser pointer in my clicker? Right, so uh, the maple leaf uh, shows the life cycle of uh, a bacteria. A bacteria, just like any other living organism, uh, grows and divides, reach uh, a peak, uh, then they get older and die off. For many bacteria, it takes uh, two to three days. For instance, uh, if pathogens uh, infect uh, the small intestine, then in two to three days, you're going to see uh, lots of uh, bacteria dead bodies. Uh, and uh, where do they go? Uh, are they being excreted from the intestine or not? These are the macrovilli in the intestine. and. Uh, lots of uh, dead bacteria uh, get stuck. Uh, uh, in other words, these are dead cells which have not uh, uh, biodegraded yet. And the first and foremost, uh, uh, toll-like receptors uh, respond to them and they launch uh, a, uh, an immune cascade to get rid of the pathogen pathogens. Uh, the intestine starts generating more mucus uh, so that epithelium is protected from these bacteria. And if the patho uh, pathogenic effect uh, is still pronounced, then uh, the motility increases so that uh, everything has been excreted, including the nutrients that have not been absorbed yet. The epithelial function uh, also uh, gets disrupted, and that uh, causes all the disorders shown, shown in the slide. For instance, uh, the bonds between the cells uh, get uh, disrupted. Ultimately, uh, that uh, causes uh, disorders of uh, bone mineralization and so on and so forth, and other unpleasant consequences might result from that. What is the main, one of the main antigens uh, for uh, causing such a reaction from the gut? Uh, this is uh, a gram positive and gram negative bacteria. And the difference, as is clear, uh, is the number of layers of uh, peptide glycans. Uh, this, is, this is a structural element of the bacteria membrane. Uh, shown on the right-hand side is uh, its composition, N-acetylglucosamine and N-acetylmuramic acid uh, uh, linked by the acid uh, bonds. These are uh, structures that, uh, even after the death of bacteria, uh, keep on acting as an antigen. Uh, uh, and uh, the immunity system uh, keeps on uh, uh, operating against uh, the fragments rather than live bacteria. What is muramidase? Uh, muramidase uh, is an enzyme, and it's uh, a large group of glycoid uh, enzymes. Uh, Moramidase uh, is specific in catalyzing uh, peptide, peptide glycan uh, hydrolysis. They severe the bond uh, and uh, 
uh, they uh, they split peptide glycans uh, that releases uh, uh, more amid deep peptide. Uh, I'm going to speed up, I guess. Uh, let's move on to the experiment of using moramidase uh, in the feed uh, of the poultry to see what happens. This is a brief description of the experiment. The experiment uh, was carried out uh, in the Volgograd uh, State Agro-Industry University. Uh, the overall headcount is 378 uh, chicks, so they were put into 12 uh, floor uh, cages. Unfortunately, we didn't have uh, any more available cages. Uh, of course, we want to scale up the experiment, but we're unable to do so. Uh, they were split into four uh, groups, uh, three cages each, uh, and uh, they were spaced apart. Uh, there were either 28 or 35 birds per uh, per uh, cage. The uh, floor space of each cage was 1.8 uh, meters, so we can calculate the poultry density. We, we monitored uh, two factors, uh, poultry density, and the second one is uh, uh, muramidase. In uh, group one, uh, the uh, there was no remedies. The uh, density was uh, high. Uh, in the second group, the density was even higher, and there was remedies. And remedies was applied. This is the way it looked uh, uh, on day one and uh, before slaughter. And this is the breakdown by cages. We received lots of interesting figures and data, but uh, since I want to stick to the time slot allocated to me, I just want to mention that the uh, life weight in group uh, one was considered to be 100%. In other words, uh, group one was control group, low uh, density, no remedies. That's 100%. The growth rate was quite uh, high, uh, 203 grams. Uh, Within seven days, uh, all the uh, f feeds uh, were in compliance with uh, the ROS 308 requirements, uh, pelletized feed. Take a look at the uh, higher density uh, group, that's group two. The productivity was on a par with that of group one. It doesn't say that, or it doesn't mean that density has no impact. Of course, poultry density has impact on productivity, but it was just an experiment. Uh, all the birds were healthy. And in this particular conditions, uh, the poultry density had no negative impact. Let's take a look at uh, groups three and four now. The uh, average daily gains were higher and uh, Jumping ahead, I just want to mention that uh, Moramidase uh, premixes uh, have been approved. Uh, they are available in the market. We carried out a number of field tests uh, with various poultry farms, and uh, the uh, outcomes were quite good. However, uh, in the field, we did not see a spike like that on day seven or even on day 14. In field conditions, uh, we only saw positive uh, response uh, after day 21, and the maximum effect was salient before, uh, right before the slaughter. We cannot explain the reason for such uh, a pronounced effect on day uh, seven in experimental conditions. Uh, the bacteria uh, died off uh, in the gut, and uh, moramidase is an enzyme, and uh, I guess uh, the amount of substrate was sufficient for the enzyme to uh, result in such an effect. Let us let me skip to the last slide. This is the uh, live weight uh, at day 38. That's with the pre-slaughter uh, pre slaughter of fasting, uh, which means that we fed, uh, we fed uh, the poultry for 37 days. And uh, on day 37, uh, 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 the fasting started. So uh, in group two, uh, we uh, saw the very same uh, weight as in group one, and both uh, groups uh, that received moramidase uh, featured a significantly a statistically significant difference of 100 grams. That's about uh, three grams in average daily gain. The same holds true for uh, feed conversion ratio. Uh, both uh, groups uh, uh, that received moramidase uh, had a lower FCR. So we're talking about uh, more than four uh, 
for uh, percentage points of FCR, uh, and the result actually exceeded our expectations. Moreover, uh, out of which cage we uh, uh, we took uh, five birds uh, of average weight, uh, we slaughtered them and did the autopsy. This is the rel uh, the uh, r relative weight of uh, various organs. No difference. Uh, the uh, Intestinal uh, intestinals were quite long. Uh, pellets uh, had to be broken down, uh, almost uh, like dust. Uh, and uh, you know that uh, protein is uh, absorbed in the small uh, intestine. Uh, that means that the intestine grows uh, better and faster as opposed to uh, that of birds uh, who intake pelletized feed. So uh, usually it's 1.5 meters, in our case it was uh, 2 meters, but we didn't see any difference uh, between the groups. However, uh, the meat production was the only difference and it was statistically significant. And that's exactly what we see in the field conditions at poultry farms. So those poultry farms that provide us with uh, the slaughter data and, uh, you know, their slaughtering process uh, is non-stop. They don't care uh, uh, what uh, the poultry farms are. Uh, but in this particular case, we saw a 1% a, a, a higher meat produ uh, productivity. Moreover, after slaughter, uh, we uh, took out uh, the middle part of the small uh, intestine from each bird and uh, send it here uh, to uh, the Novosibirsk Bay based lab. And uh, a very detailed report was drafted uh, and it uh, demonstrated that uh, the pathology of the intestine, pathological condition of the intestine uh, of those birds who received uh, moramidase was much better than that of, of those in the control group. Uh, this is the Vili height, uh, and uh, there is a statistical difference between groups uh, three and four, as opposed to the control group. And this is the crypt uh, depth, uh, and uh, the stem cells uh, divide there, uh, and they form either epithelial or functional gut cells. Therefore, the crypt uh, depth is another important parameter for uh, the immunity of the uh, bird and uh, it affects the absorption of the nutrients. Groups three and four, as is clear from the diagram, uh, featured uh, deeper crypts, uh, but it was not statistically significant. As for the conclusions, uh, microbial myramidase uh, and uh, the activity uh, of myramidase uh, is measured in LSU. It's an international standard. Uh, so uh, in our case, the dose was 450 LSU per kilo. It increases the live weight uh, that was demonstrated both during the experiment and in field tests. It improved uh, FCR. It has no impact on uh, the feed intake, uh, either in the field or uh, during the experiment. And it also increases the slaughter uh, weight. Uh, we have no idea why. Uh, maybe uh, of a different distribution uh, of fat and muscle. And moramidase also improves the uh, pathological condition of uh, the uh, poultry guts. In a nutshell, this is it. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to take them. Thank you so much for a very interesting presentation. Uh, I hope you don't mind if I call moramidase uh, by a different uh, name. Uh, uh, lysozyme, uh, no, uh, I object to that because uh, uh, Moramidase is just uh, uh, a, 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 is a product of microbial synthesis. Uh, Lysozyme uh, uh, is aimed at live bacteria, while moramidase does not affect live uh, 
live uh, bacteria. And the number of lactobacteria increases because uh, either they use miramil dipeptide as a nutrient. I don't know the reason, but uh, the composition of macrophora uh, is not affected by muramidase. That's the first difference. The second difference is that it's cheaper because uh, this is microbial synthesis uh, to produce any enzyme. It's much, much cheaper uh, than uh, using biomaterial as uh, the raw material. I didn't know the difference. Any other questions? My question is about your experiment. Uh, uh, you focused on uh, FCR and uh, average daily gains. As far as I understand, the premixes that you used, uh, in addition to, uh, you didn't use any food supplements, just uh, miramidase. Uh, thank you for the question. I totally missed that in my presentation. Uh, the product that contains moramidase uh, has been available in Europe and uh, in the US for quite some time, but uh, uh, it uh, it was never uh, administered along with uh, antibiotics because uh, uh, antibiotic growth promoters, AGPs, are uh, banned there. In Russia, AGPs are not banned, therefore, uh, both uh, in the control, both the control group uh, and the experimental group received both AGPs and coccidiostats. Russia differs not only in uh, administration of uh, antibiotics, but also in poultry density. That's why we experimented with two different densities. By the way, 39 kilos per square meter uh, was the mid productivity with the low density group. And in high density, it was about 50 kilos per square meter. We uh, we expected to see some difference, uh, but uh, this experiment did not prove it because density had no negative impact. So you're saying that the density can be increased uh, if you administer remedies. Uh, Fetase uh, and xylanase were uh, allowed. I have no idea what uh, xylanase concentration was, but that was their basic uh, prepex. Xylanase was included. Good afternoon. Uh, well, uh, you stated that the poultry density had no impact, but please keep in mind that it's not uh, about the density, but uh, also about the size of the flock. Uh, it's not just that you put in a small uh, cage uh, lots of birds. If your hen house is not uh, large, it might not be the factor, but if the hen house is large, then uh, the behavior behavior uh, changes and the microbial cloud will be totally different. And my uh, question is, uh, you stated that uh, you partnered up with the Volgograd State uh, Agro Industry University. Uh, uh, they uh, they have uh, they have a broiler house uh, for experiments. Uh, they run uh, scientific experiments uh, at least six times a year there. Thank you so much uh, for sharing uh, some interesting data with us. Thank you for the question. Any other questions? Thank you. I was uh, also shocked because uh, uh, lysozyme uh, uh, is called muramidase in parentheses, so they're basically identical, I guess. Well, since you uh, ran the experiment on broilers, and you uh, don't you uh, aren't you concerned about autoimmune re reactions in uh, layers? Thank you for a wonderful question. That's uh, a very proper question. Uh, well, Europe just allowed moramidase to be uh, uh, used in uh, breeders uh, for layers. It has been improved uh, for quite some time. As for auto autoimmune reactions, we reduce uh, the uh, 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 gut immunity costs uh, because uh, all you, need, you don't need to fight against the dead bacteria. All you need to do is uh, degrade them and excrete them. Gut uh, uh, produces muramidase in small quantities. These are endogenous uh, 
quantities, but if you uh, provide raw protein, uh, crude protein to uh, the birds, a pathog pathogens uh, such as Clostridia uh, replicate at such a speed that was not envisioned by uh, by uh, the nature, and we reduce the this burden, but the immunity is not suppressed in any way. On the contrary, we free up the resources for better immune response. Exactly, uh, we reduce the excessive aggressive uh, aggressiveness and uh, the additional average daily gain is provided by the freeing up of the energy. Let me read out a couple of questions from uh, from Zoom. So the first one is, uh, where did you get the concentration of uh, uh, the bacteria in uh, gastrointestinal tract? Uh, the maximum concentration uh, might be uh, one uh, 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 multiplied by 10 to the power of 10. And for the bacillus, it's uh, four multiplied by 10 to the power of 12. Uh, well, uh, the slide specify the source at the bottom of the uh, screen. Uh, this data uh, was copied from uh, a paper by Richard Bogatella. This is a Vienna-based professor. Uh, he specializes in gut health status, and he was the first one who uh, examined muramidase in the gut flora. That's his data. Any other questions? Aren't you concerned about an additional burden on uh, the body? You know, so, you know, because these are microbial. Is it micro microbial synthesis, uh, or is it a chemical synthesis? No, it's a, no, it's a purified enzyme. It's microbial synthesis. But purification is now is never a hundred percent. So, uh, along with this enzyme, you also introduce toxic elements. Is that a problem? Is that a uh, reason for concern? Well. Uh, I don't see any reasons for concern. Uh, I, uh, as far as I know, uh, the producer uh, uh, is one of the largest pharmaceutical uh, companies. Uh, and they produce lots of enzymes for both animals and humans alike. Uh, their uh, qualifications are, are beyond any doubt. And I have uh, never heard uh, about any problems of their commercial products. Uh, well, uh, they excrete the dead bacteria. Exactly, that's uh, their own strain. Uh, okay, my question might not be original, but how much does it cost? Uh, well, this question should not be addressed to me. Uh, we don't know what the foreign exchange rate is, well, we can uh, use the uh, Russian ruble to euro exchange rate uh, for today to calculate uh, the price. Uh, the, the, the product uh, uh, is uh, sold under the name of Balances by DSM in Russia. And uh, many uh, large uh, corporates use it. As for uh, administering it to breeder, bre breeder flocks, uh, we are currently running an experiment with uh, layers and breeders, and the product is demonstrating extremely positive results. And of course, we will share the results and the outcomes of this experiment with you as soon as it's done. It will be published in the industry journals uh, and sent out to companies. The, the product is uh, available and uh, we'll be happy to discuss the price separately with every potential customer. Much depends on the dose. Uh, you know, there is uh, uh, a uh, range, 250 to, to 450. So it's uh, 350 to 500 Russian rubles per ton. I mean, uh, uh, the payback is fast. Four percentage points, uh, was it uh, f uh, during the experiment? Yes, it was during the experiment. Uh, 3.5 percentage point uh, was uh, w w was uh, the one, uh, was the average daily gain in increase that we saw uh, in the field. So you're saying that uh, this product uh, is an immune modulator, uh, not an, an immune stimulator, but an, an immune 
module, uh, modulating effect uh, substance. What would be the immune response to vaccines uh, uh, in poultry that received your uh, product? Well, we're currently running uh, at, a test uh, at a large farm with a headcount of 3 million. Uh, it's uh, in full swing, and at the very end, we would uh, probably ask the vets to uh, evaluate the um, uh, the uh, active immunity response. I have some uh, serum samples uh, and I want to study them for uh, the bacterial invasion, but unfortunately the uh, test sets are not available in Russia anymore. Well, inflammation uh, would be a good indicator. Uh, in St. Pete, we uh, followed a biotroph uh, effect uh, uh, presentation and uh, they uh, uh, they monitor the inflammation factors in uh, the poultry gut. Thank you for sharing that information uh, with me. Uh, well, uh, their representative is somewhere here, so you can seek more information from them. Another brief remark, and then we will move on to our next presenter. Uh, immunomodulators are a very interesting topic. Uh, well, a couple of years back, we uh, uh, experimented with a drug that became an Oryx uh, drug, and we are no longer uh, able to use it uh, at poultry farms. But it considerably improved FCR and the average daily gains and so on and so forth. Nevertheless, thank you so much. Uh, uh, presentation and uh, they uh, uh, they monitor the inflammation factors in uh, the poultry gut. Thank you for sharing that information uh, with me. Uh, well, uh, their representative is somewhere here, so you can seek more information from them. Another brief remark, and then we will move on to our next presenter. Uh, immunomodulators are a very interesting topic. Uh, well, a couple of years back, we uh, uh, experimented with a drug that became an Oryx uh, drug, and we are no longer uh, able to use it uh, at poultry farms. But it considerably improved FCR and the average daily gains and so on and so forth. Nevertheless, thank you so much.